Greetings, kindred spirits. I hope you're all doing well. It's like the energies haven't really let up. Um, not for me, anyway. You know, I have to say, even I've been feeling a bit irritable lately, but I've kind of just checked myself and calmed down, calmed down. But it's been really hard to focus as well, I've found. Um, and I haven't forgotten about the videos I'm going to be doing. Um, just October's a very, very busy month for me with anniversaries and birthdays, etc. So I'm planning on doing that around about November. But I did actually do um, a podcast last week with Seekers Library, which will be released around about the 13th of December. You know, I'm just waiting for that to be confirmed. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, she asked me some really interesting questions and I think I'll be covering them a little bit more in the podcast um, that I should be doing soon. So this isn't going to be an overly long video because, to be honest, the energies I'm seeing coming in are quite repetitive. But before I get into that, I just want to talk about why the new moon is going to occur in Virgo again, this new moon. And um, that's because Virgo is actually the largest constellation in the true lifetime sky. Virgo is actually 45 degrees wide, and that actually means 45 days long, around about 45 days long. So that's why every year we always get two new moons in Virgo. But this particular season of Virgo has been very intense because Uranus's energy has been very strong. And Uranus's energy is very nervous energy. Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius, so Aquarius is renowned for nervous energy. Aquarius is actually the Mad Hatter of the Zodiac. And I've got my moon in Aquarius, so I can actually vouch for that. But the Virgo, the constellation of Virgo, or the star sign of Virgo, also holds a lot of nervous energy. So the two combined in this season of Virgo has really hyped up the nervous energy. And with all the other planet placements and aspects as well, it's been, wow, it's been quite a handful, especially mentally. Mentally, I think some of us have felt like our heads are going to explode with all this energy coming in. But anyway, let's get into the new moon. So the new moon begins, as I said, in Virgo on the 28th of October at 3.38am in the GMT time zone, at 14.38 in the AEDT time zone, and on the 27th of October at 23.38 in the EDT time zone. As the new moon begins, she will be in opposition to Uranus and in trine to the North Node, which again, as I said, will create a lot of nervous and erratic energy. There could actually be a lot of um, stomach or digestive issues going on for many of us at this time, but that will also depend on our own individual natal charts but definitely nervous energy with our solar plexus or emotionally or even mentally. And as I said, that will depend on our own individual chart of where Virgo sits and where Uranus is sitting right now. There's been a lot of tensions and irritations that have been brewing and erupting throughout this season of Virgo, which has depleted the best of us because it just doesn't offer any solid foundation. That just rolls up insecurity issues, hypersensitivity, with a lot of twists and turns, or even like rebellious actions or attitudes. And that has left many of us mentally out of focus or too much in our heads. Concentration has definitely been lacking for sure. So in Virgo, the new moon... And the full moon this season, well, both these new moons and the full moon throughout the season of Virgo has brought out the over-exacting traits of Virgo and the extreme hypersensitivities of Pisces. 
know, and that's alongside the grand aspects that just added to all that tension. But the full moon that took place two weeks ago did offer us a creative outlet for all this erratic energy. But now, even some playtime will be hard to access under this new moon's highly critical and over-analytical tendency. All through the season of Virgo, it has felt like one step forwards, two steps back, which has really frustrated the best of us. Unless we are that person that can just go with the flow. Even I haven't been able to go with the flow. And I'm sure there's many of us out there that do this work that have found it really hard to focus or to stay grounded. Even if we are a laid-back person and have just been in our own space, I still feel like we could be missing the point. You know, so even we're either we're in avoidance or we're just in it, <laughs> in it completely, and it's just full on. So as we start this new cycle, the best thing we can do is try and calm and relax ourselves as much as possible. And Mars is also transiting in Virgo in the true lifetime sky. And that is also adding to the burden of making us feel that we must do more. But it's also activating that over-analytical thinking and that can just hold a lot of us back from actually getting anything done. Maybe it's just hard to absorb information or we can think something one minute and it's just gone the next, you know. I know it's been like that for me. Since he is also involved in the Grand Cross alongside Saturn, the Moon's Nodes and Chiron, means that many of us still need to break old cycles of negative thinking due to old wounds or a lack of self-confidence. So a lot of us are still doing a lot of deep healing work. Chiron at the moment is retrograde, you know, and that isn't unusual for Chiron. He does tend to retrograde quite frequently. But in this instance, it can leave, leave us feeling stuck in a past situation or stuck in a dark attitude. And that's likely to be based on ego or we're stuck in that blame game. So we must stand up and accept self-responsibility, you know, regardless of the past and regardless of who was really to blame. And I know it's not an easy thing to do, but that's the only way that we can allow the healing in is once we accept. Acceptance is really quite a hard thing to do when we're in that place of anguish or emotional pain. So again, this energy or this new moon is all about the present moment and gaining the wisdom and trying to see the greater whole or the, the bigger picture so that we can allow the healing process to do its thing. The grand kite this new moon involves Mercury retrograde, Venus, Pluto and the goddesses Pallas, Juno and Vesta. And that is offering us an opportunity to get focused on something constructive and worthwhile. But negatively, it can keep us in self-delusion where we may only see things from our own point of view or from our own expectations of what we feel we deserve. I would recommend that we get stuck into something energetic like um, clearing space or maybe decorating or, you know, something that doesn't take intricate thinking because I feel our minds are just so overloaded with um, nervous energy at the moment anyway. Or, if it's not mentally, it's emotionally. The wounds that are surfacing are still very deep. And there's still a lot of irritability. The goddess Vesta of the sacred fire is at zero degrees in Taurus. And is actually offering us an opportunity to really get grounded and in touch with our own inner strength and wisdom. The only thing is she sits at the bottom of the Grand Kai aspect. So to me, this is like the energy of the Phoenix. 
I just feel there's going to be a lot of rebirths going on throughout this new moon. And it's just dawned on me, actually, that this new moon is um, a 10-10 um, a portal. So I'm sure Catherine Kinney may have already done um, a podcast on that, or maybe she's due to do one. Um, you can find her on my Facebook page. Um, I haven't really been on Facebook much, really. Um, this month, so yeah, check her out. I'm sure she would have done one on the 1010 portal. Um, yeah, I would say the element of air is very strong, but so is the element of fire. So we can expect, um, still a lot more twists and turns, you know, that's globally and collectively, and probably with a lot of stormy weather. I know we're here in England, we've had storms and rain all this week. If it isn't about stormy weather, then it's definitely about stormy uproars. Um, it's just so much going on at the moment. So much going on. And we've got the Black Moon Lilith, who is in Pisces and in conjunction to Chiron in the true lifetime sky. And that inflicts or continues to bring up a lot of wounds or misgivings. And in opposition to the goddess Juno and Mars, it's a very conflicting energy. And it's also can portray a, a misuse of power. Especially when it comes to abandonment issues or over neediness or even self-delusion. These particular aspects can be quite self-defensive or self-sabotaging, especially if we are caught up in that cycle of the blame game, when really we all need to accept our part. And acceptance is a very hard thing for many of us to do, you know, when we're in that place of anguish or in that place of, in, of deep emotion. We also have Jupiter, conjunct Ceres in Ophucus and again this is telling me about health issues again about self-nurture good food good vibes maybe going into our caves a little bit maybe that is needed but some of us really want to push forward and really get out there and Maybe boredom's at play or frustration because, like, you feel like you're running on the spot and not getting anywhere. I felt a bit like that this week, actually. I feel like I've been running on the spot and not getting anywhere. But really, it's just the energies and the next full moon in the true lifetime sky is going to occur in Aries. So I just feel that's when everything's going to hit the fan. Um, I haven't looked at the chart too deeply, but... Yeah, the full moon in Aries, I just feel that's going to be the grand finale for all this energy over this season of Virgo, so throughout all this month of October. Saturn and Pluto next month are going to start getting closer and closer together. They're going to, I'm actually going to do a Saturn and Pluto conjunction update as well. I was looking at that the other day, how they're coming together and the dates and that, so I should probably do an update on that as well, very soon. Just look after yourselves, watch your health, because sometimes we can make ourselves, you know, push ourselves too hard, physically, mentally and emotionally. We can tend to push ourselves too hard under these energies. So make sure you're eating good food, and I really do feel eating a proper diet or getting a... Well, I said actually on the last podcast to get a care plan in order. And that is just like with everything, mentally, emotionally and physically. So that's food, meditation, taking time out to smell the roses. Remember, Mercury is about to go retrograde. We're at a 1010 portal, so there's even more energy waves coming in. You know, look at what comes up, but don't. Try not to get stuck in that energy. Try and find a way of releasing it and turning it into something positive because 
Vesta at the bottom of this kite at zero degrees Taurus. This is us rebirthing into something more solid, a more solid foundation, but we can only find that inwardly. Mercury's in retrograde, Neptune's in retrograde, Uranus is in retrograde still. So it's all about finding inner peace. Anyway, I've linked two of Steve Noble's meditations that I feel will be significant to this new moon. And as always, I send you peace and much love.